This video covers uh, the second section that deals with trig equations. Um, and in this section, uh, all of the equations um, have an argument of the trig function that is uh, a product or a sum or something um, such as this. So here, 3x, this is still an angle. And um, what we're saying is cosine of what angle is equal to 1 half. However, the angle that we're solving for, um, x, we're going to multiply that by, or it's getting multiplied by 3 in this equation. And the instructions here say to find all solutions in radians. Okay, so to solve this equation, um, what we want to do is, <coughs> well... We want to answer the question, cosine of what angle is equal to 1 half? In other words, where is cosine equal to 1 half? And that is equal to 1 half. Um, well, cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. And cosine is 1 half here and here. So that's at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to say 3x is equal to pi over 3. And then 3x is equal to 5 pi over 3. Now, because this says to find all solutions and there's no interval, we need to include the 2k pi plus 2k pi. And um, it's really a good practice to always include this um, this general term here. Um, and sometimes we may need it, sometimes we won't, but we don't know if we will need that general term for these types of equations until the end of the um, the end of the solving process. So um, for these types of questions we always want to include that general term. Um, so we uh, are almost there, we just have to solve for um, x. So we're going to divide everything by 3 here. Um, so we get x equals pi over 3 divided by 3, that's the same as times 1 third. So pi over 9 plus 2 thirds k pi, that'll be one of our solutions. And then the second equation, we're going to divide everything by 3 again. We get x is equal to 5 thirds times 1 third is 5 ninths, so 5 ninths pi plus 2 thirds k pi, and that's for any k integer here. So that is our solution. Um, now let's look at an example where um, instead of finding all solutions, we're going to find the solutions within a specified interval. So this, this equation is um, again basically the same as what we had last time, except we're going to find all solutions in the um, interval 0 to 2 pi. So we solve this in the same way. Um, where does cosine have a value of 1 half? That's at uh, pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. So we're going to say 3x is equal to pi over 3 plus 2k pi. And then 3x is equal to 5 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. All right, so let's divide by 3. We're going to get x is equal to pi over 9 plus 2 thirds k pi x is equal to 5 pi over 9 plus 2 thirds k pi. At this point, nothing different has occurred uh, compared to that previous example. Now, the difference is we only want values that are in this interval. So what we need to do is um, we cannot leave our solution um, in this form because um, if we pick a value for k, I don't know, 10, if we plug in 10, we're definitely going to be outside of that interval. Or if we pick an integer negative, I don't know, negative 8, that's going to be outside of that interval. So we want to find the specific values that are going to give us um, angles that are in that interval. So let's pick some values for k. Typically we start at k equals 0 um, and plug it into this solution equation and see what we end up with. Um, so when k is equal to 0, well, this second 
uh, term in the equation becomes zero. So x is equal to pi over nine plus zero, or just pi over nine, and that is definitely in the interval. So when k is equal to zero, we get pi over nine, and that is a good solution. Um, and we proceed in this manner. We just pick, we go in order of, inter of integers. If k is equal to one, well, we're gonna get x equal to pi over nine plus two-thirds times one is two-thirds, so two-thirds pi. And what do we get when we add that together? Well, getting a common denominator, pi over nine plus six pi over nine is going to be seven pi over nine. Seven pi over nine, that's a little bit less than one pi, so that is also in the interval. K equal to two, we're gonna have x equal to pi over nine plus two thirds times two. Well, that'll be four thirds pi. Um, and so what we end up with here is um, pi over 9 plus, uh, time divided by 3, 12 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9. That's a little bit more than 1, but less than 2. That is still in the interval. k equals 3. So we need to keep going in this fashion until we get some value, some angle that is bigger than 2 pi. So 3 times 2 thirds, that's 2 pi. Um, kind of running out of room here. Um, let me write that a little bit different. I just write that as 2 times 3 is 6 pi over 3. Um, and what happens when we add that together? Well, we get um, top and bottom by 3, 18 pi over 9 plus pi over 9 is 19 pi over 9. And that's a problem. That is not in this interval that we need to be in. It's bigger than 2 pi. So 19 pi over 9 is not a solution. So the solutions we get are 13 pi over 9, 7 pi over 9, and pi over 9. Now sometimes we also need to check, not sometimes, we always need to check the negative values for k um, just to see uh, what happens. Um, we need to make sure that um, we are collecting all the solutions that are in this interval. So x equals pi over 9. 2 thirds times k, well k is negative 1, so 2 thirds times negative 1 is negative 2 over 3 pi. And what we get there is, well, t multiply the top and bottom by 3, 6 over 9, so pi minus 6 pi is going to be negative 5 pi over 9, and what we see is that that, again, is definitely not in the interval. So we get three solutions here. Now, that's just half of the um, half of the problem. So what we need to do is solve uh, the other half of the problem. Find all the solutions um, on the second part of this equation. So I've done all the work here, and what we see is we get a solution of five pi over nine, eleven pi over nine, and seventeen pi over nine. So we get six solutions. So we would write this solution set as all x such that x is equal to, and then we're just going to list these. I'll list them in order, pi over 9, 5 pi over 9, 7 pi over 9, uh, 11 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9, and 17 pi, oops, 17 pi over so that last one is 17 pi over 9. So that would be our solution set. Um, so this is a process, um, getting this all the solutions for uh, this type of equation. And you, you're going to end up in, with an equation that has solutions in this form when we have a compound argument or a product in within our argument. Um, one last thing before we move on. What we notice is that, let's, let's see the pattern here. Well, this first possible solution we had negative 5 pi over 9, and then pi over 9, and then 7 pi over 9, 13 pi over 9, 9, that should be 19 pi over 9. And what happens is, well, what's what we're doing is we're, in this particular example, we're adding 6 pi over 9 to each of these solutions. Same thing is happening on the right-hand side. Negative pi over 9, 5 pi over 9, 11 pi, 17 pi, 23 pi. So again, we're adding 6 pi over 9. 
as you start to do these uh, e types of equations more, um, you're going to pick up on this type of pattern in these solutions. Um, so as you do these more, um, you're going to be able to get these solutions much more quickly. The next example says, find all solutions for the equation sine of x over 2 is equal to negative root 3 over 2. All right, well, negative root 3 over 2, that is a value that's on the unit circle. And where does sine take on that value? Well, sine is negative um, in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant. And those values, and we're going to use radians here for our angle measurement, those values are 4 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So we're going to say x over 2 is equal to 4 pi over 3. That will lead to one of our solution sets. And then we're going to say x over 2 is equal to 5 pi over 3. Now, um, we also uh, need to write the 2k pi term here. Okay, so to solve this, we need to solve for x. And to solve this type of equation for x, we need to multiply both sides by 2. So we get x is equal to uh, 4 thirds times 2 is 8 thirds. So 8 thirds pi plus 4k pi here. And then on the right-hand side, same thing. We're going to multiply everything by 2. So we get x equal to 10 pi over 3 plus 4k pi. And then from here, we're going to follow the same procedure as we did on that last example. Let's pick some k values. It's pretty much always a good idea to start at k equals 0. Um, one, because that's the easiest. <laughs> um, and uh, that's often where our first solution will, will begin at. So um, when k is equal to 0, we get uh, just 8 thirds pi. And that is greater than 2 pi. So that is larger. That's outside the interval. So that is not a possible solution. It's too big. So what that means is k equals 1 would also be too big. k equals 2 would also be too big, and so on and so forth. So we can't go larger than k equals 0. So let's pick k equal to negative 1. And if we do that, we get x equals 8 thirds pi. Um, when k is negative 1, we're going to have minus 4 pi. So adding those together, or rather taking 8 thirds pi minus 4, well, 4 over 1, that's the same thing as 12 over 3. So negative 4 thirds pi is what we're going to get. And that is also outside the interval. So neither of these um, angles are going to be solutions to this equation. The right-hand side, we're going to follow the same procedure. And doing so, we get 10 pi over 3 and negative 2 thirds pi, or negative 2 pi over 3, however you want to think of it. Um, oops. And neither of these are in the interval. So um, what we've discovered is that there are no solutions to this equation. There are no integers k that are going to get us angle values in the interval 0 to 2 pi. So what we'd say here is, well, this has no solution. Kind of a bummer after all that work it's, uh, to uh, do, do all that and end up with no solution, but um, that's just the way it is. Um, so let's look at a couple more examples here. Here we have an equation um, that asks us to find the solutions in the interval um, 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So take note, we want our solution to be in degrees here. Um, so this question is asking us tangent of 2 theta is equal to square root 3. In other words, uh, to solve this first, we want to ask ourselves, where does tangent have a value that is equal to square root of 3? Well, tangent is 
positive in the first and third quadrant. In the first quadrant, that'll be 60 degrees. In the third quadrant, well, that's 270 minus 30, that's 240 degrees. What we could write this as is 2 theta is equal to 60 degrees plus 360k. Um, the second solution set will be 2 theta is equal to 240 degrees plus 360k. Now this would be an appropriate way to go about solving this problem. However, if we remember that tangent, the, the angles and uh, tangent here are going to be um, pi, uh, an angle of pi away from each other, or since we're in degrees, 180 degrees away from each other. Um, so 180 gets us from 60 to 240, so from the first quadrant to the third quadrant. And then to get back up into the first quadrant, well, if we add 180 again, we get back to that position. So we could write it um, just as I did here, or we could say 2 theta plus, or 2 theta is equal to 60 degrees plus 180 degrees times K. And this will generate all of the solutions uh, that we will need. So let's pick some values for K. If, oh, we're not even there yet. Um, we need to solve for theta. So to solve for theta, we're going to divide everything by 2, um, and we end up with theta is equal to 30 degrees plus 90 degrees times k. And then let's pick some values for k um, to uh, solve this, to find the exact angle measurements. Um, so k is equal to 0, we're going to get theta is equal to 30 plus 90 times 0, so that's just 30. And that is in the interval, remember, our interval that we want is 0 to 360. Uh, when k is equal to 1, we get 30 plus 90 is 120 degrees, that is in the interval. And we proceed in this way, so theta, when k is 2, that's 180 plus 30 is 210. What you may notice is that we're adding 90 degrees each step of the way. Okay, so that's a way we can kind of check our work. Um, theta, 30 plus 90 times 3, 90 times 3 is 270, so 300 degrees here. That is in the interval. When k is equal to 4, we're going to get theta equal to 30 plus uh, 360. Um, that's going to be 390 so 390 degrees, and that is not in the interval. Um, and to double check, if k is equal to negative 1, we're going to get theta equal to 30 minus 90 is negative 60 degrees, and that is also not in the range. So our solution set is going to be 30, 120, 210, and 300. So we could say all of theta such that theta is equal to 30 degrees, 120 degrees, 210 degrees, and 300 degrees. On this last one, we have sine of 2x plus cosine of 2x is equal to square root 2, and we want to be in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Now, the issue with this equation is that we have two different trig functions, so we want to write these, we want to write this equation in terms of a single trig function. Now, some things to recognize here. Well, is there a double angle? Um, uh, can we use some double angle identities here um, to convert everything to a single trig function? Well, sine of 2x, that is 2 sine x cosine x. So if we were to make that, so that substitution, we're still going to have two um, trig functions there. Um, with cosine of 2x, what could we do? Well, cosine of 2x... Um, we could say is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. That doesn't really help us. Um, and then there's two other versions. We have 2 cosine squared x minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Now, um, this double angle of sine is really the problem here because we could make a substitution for cosine 2x um, and get down to just stay with one trig function. Um, 
And specifically, if we make this substitution here um, for cosine 2x, that's great, but um, this sine of 2x is still going to be causing us some trouble. Um, so how I'm going to approach this is um, by squaring both sides. So if we square both sides here, what we end up with is sine of 2x plus cosine 2x times sine of 2, oops, 2x plus cosine 2x. Square root of 2 squared is equal to just 2. Um, and then if I multiply this left-hand side out, what we're going to have is sine squared of 2x plus, well, sine of 2x times cosine 2x, and then cosine 2x times sine of 2x, that's going to be plus 2 sine 2x cosine 2x, and then cosine 2x times cosine 2x here, we're going to get plus cosine squared of 2x. That's equal to 2. All right, so what we have is this sine squared of 2x and cosine of squared 2x. That's just a Pythagorean identity. So I can replace that with 1 here. So we're going to have 2 sine 2x cosine 2x plus 1 is equal to 2. And 2 sine of 2x cosine 2x, well, that is the double angle. So Suppose we have, um, let's just write this double angle again, it's 2 sine x cosine x. Now, in this version that we have here, it's as though x is equal to 2x. So what I'm going to do is wherever I see an x um, in this double angle identity, I'm going to replace that with 2x. Um, let's write that slightly different. Let's say x is equal to 2y here. So x is equal to 2y. So what we'd say is that, well, um, wherever we see x, we're going to replace that with 2y. So 2 times sine of 2y cosine 2y. And here, I'm going to replace the x with 2y. So really, we're going to have sine of 4y. So we can kind of translate the double angle identity to look something like that. So, um, back to the equation, we're going to write this as sine of 4x plus 1 is equal to 2. And then from here, this equation, um, we've solved uh, something quite similar to this so far. So, sine of 4x is equal to 1. Um, so, this is saying, where does sine have a value of 1? And again, for this particular question, we want to be in the interval 0 to 2 pi, so we want our solutions to be in radians. So where does sine have a value equal to 1 in radians? And that's at pi over 2. So we're going to say 4x is equal to pi over 2 plus 2k pi. That's the only position, pi over 2, where sine is equal to 1. And then we're going to divide everything by 4. We get x is equal to pi over 8 plus... 2k pi divided by 4, that's going to be 2 fourths, or 1 half. So 1 half pi um, times k. So pi over 2 times k. And then from here, we just need to select some values of k. So if k is equal to 0, we're going to get x equal to pi over 8. When k is equal to 1, we are going to get x equals pi over 8 plus pi over 2. Um, getting a common denominator, that's 4 pi over 8, so 5 pi over 8. Those are both in the interval. When k is equal to 2, we get um, x equal to pi over 8 plus um, 2 pi over 2, which is really just pi, but um, writing this with a common denominator, we're going to get um, 8 pi over 8 plus 1 pi over 8 is 9 pi over 8. That is in the interval. When k is equal to 3, we get x equal to 
pi over 8 plus 3 pi over 2. We're going to get x equal to um, 12 pi over 8 plus pi over 8 is 13 pi over 8. And when k is equal to 4, what we're going to end up with is a value that is too big. Um, kind of running out of room here, so um, I'll just do this in my head. 17 pi over 8, and that is too big. Um, likewise, if we chose k equal to negative 1, we'd get a negative value, and that is certainly not in the range. So putting this all together, we have this solution, pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, 9 pi over 8, and 13 pi over 8. So I will write our final answer down here in the bottom left. We're going to say um, all x such that x is equal to pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, 9 pi over 8, and 13 pi over 8. Now I will say this example is quite challenging to see kind of uh, that you need to square both sides here at the beginning and then this double angle substitution um, was challenging as well to see. So I will say that again this this type of question uh, is definitely as tough as we're going to see.